Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. In today's episode. Don't clock out late? No problem. Malicious compliance at work, 3 for 1 special. Maliciously comply to overwhelm our external IT service. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Don't clock out late? No problem. I worked for a hotel chain restaurant as a busboy and had lots of other little side jobs besides working the floor, mostly helping to move stock off of pallets and stuff like that. Sometimes I would clock out a little late if shipments came in later or it was a busy day plus large shipment always guaranteed another hour on the clock. We got a new manager who looked at my time card during her first fortnight as a new manager. She was real aggressive with me, asking me why I clocked out so late, like so what's up, you're playing video games on the clock for an hour. HM? You just hanging out getting paid? The rec room had video games. I explained that I was unloading pallets and she said you're a busboy, that's not your job. You clock out at 9. We have a payroll to make and we can't do it with people working extra hours because they didn't work hard enough during their shift. Okay, fine. Finally, about a month later, it was summertime, and we get this really late delivery of a bunch of dairy items. The head chef received all, and then had me start unloading it. This is at 8.45 p.m. I told him, Chef, just to be clear, Miss Weatherby said that I have to clock out at 9. Chef, well, I need this thing unloaded. Me, I've got 15 minutes, and then I get in trouble if I'm not clocked out. Chef, do your best. 8.46 p.m., go get the dolly. The dolly was taken by the banquet people, so I find it and start moving stuff. 8.53, first load on the dolly. 8.58, unloaded and back to the pallet. At 8.59, I stopped what I was doing, left it all there, and walked directly to the punch card machine. 9 p.m. on the dot, I punched out. The next day I got a call from the hotel's general manager, asking me why I left all the dairy on the pavement. It was left out overnight, and hundreds of dollars worth of stock was spoilt. Yes, I had to clock out at 9 p.m. GM, did you think it was a good idea to leave the milk outside? Me, no. GM, then help me understand why you didn't put everything away. Me, Miss Weatherby was very specific that I was not to clock out late to unload pallets. She said that's not my job. GM, did it occur to you that the chef needed to know this? Me, I told him I needed to clock out at 9 p.m. GM, we've lost hundreds of dollars and wasted all this food. Me, I would like to go back to the way it was instead of having to clock out right at 9 p.m. on my evening shifts. GM, don't do this again, clock out when the job's done. Outcome, nobody ever mentioned it, and from them on I clocked out when I needed to. Not a real juicy outcome, but it was still nice to have happened. <laughs> Malicious compliance at work, 3 for 1 special. Back at the beginning of 2021, I worked at a small community health non-profit with an insane CEO. She would constantly call team meetings to put down and belittle employees in front of the entire staff. Often, she would throw around some variation of do I have to do everything around here and call everyone on staff incompetent. When we did do something right, she never gave us credit and always took the credit for herself. She threatened firing everyone constantly and would randomly call us to gossip and make petty remarks about each other, pitting staff against each other. One day, the CEO called a team meeting. In a group text chat between some of the more chill employees, we immediately begin sending snake and eye roll emojis. Sure enough, we get on the call and she begins by bringing to our attention how Louise does not dress appropriately for work. Louise, who is also upper management, the COO, looks about ready to smack the CEO. The CEO viciously tears into Louise, commenting on everything from her hairstyle, to her lipstick shade to how it's inappropriate for Louise to wear off the shoulder blouses that show her collarbone. She then tells everyone that we all had better start dressing more formally, 
or there would be consequences. The next day, the CEO calls another meeting. We all join and Louise turns on her camera. I immediately had to turn off mine because I did not want to be caught laughing my ass off. Louise was dressed from head to toe in what looked like something someone would wear to prom. Her hair was immaculately styled into an elaborate updo, her makeup was professionally done with lash extensions and everything. She was dripping with what I assume were fake diamonds. Tiara, earrings, necklace, bracelets, and rings. And she wore the most ridiculous navy blue satin and tulle formal gown with a faux fur shoulder shrug to cover her collarbone. My best guess is that it was an old bridesmaid dress, but she never did say where she got it. The CEO was immediately fuming. Why are you dressed like that? She screeched. You told us to dress more formally. This is formal wear. Is something wrong? That's not professional for work. Oh, I'm sorry, I must have been confused. You said we needed us to dress formally, but I think what you meant to say was professionally. The CEO was livid, but Louise continued to rock the prom outfit all day, meeting with patients and clients and everything. Later that week, Tina texts our group chat and says the CEO is requiring her to submit and detailed time sheet with what she was doing and working on down to the minute for her entire day. She was going to BCC us on the email. Sure enough, it pops into our inboxes a few minutes later. Tina had literally detailed her entire past 24-hour day down to the minute. 6.45 a.m., awoken by husband's flatulence. 7 a.m., peed and changed menstrual pad. 7.02 a.m., began bowel movement. 7.10 a.m., completed bowel movement. 7.12 a.m., turned on shower. 7.13 a.m., tested water temperature with hand. You get the idea. Apparently the CEO called her on her cell phone and berated her for sending such a detailed timesheet. Tina reminded her that she had requested her entire day down to the minute, and didn't specify she meant her work day only. Finally, my turn. My job was in IT and most of my work was as a database administrator, but I often helped with other tech problems. One morning, the CEO called me repeatedly at 2 a.m. My phone settings have it so that if I miss five calls in a row from the same person, the do not disturb mode is turned off and the phone rings. I see who it is, silence my phone, and refuse to answer. At 6 a.m., she calls again. Again, I refuse to answer. 7 a.m., refuse to answer. 8 a.m., refuse to answer. Finally, at 9 a.m., I call her back. She asks to hop on a video call. I've been trying to get a hold of you all morning. Where have you been? Loud sigh can I help with you something? I asked, not even trying to hide my irritation. I literally rubbed my temples and slurped on my coffee loudly. You didn't answer my question. And I'm not going to. I was off the clock at the time you called. You're salaried, right? That means it doesn't matter if you work 100 hours or 1 hour, you get paid the same. So I expect you to be available when I need you. What do you need? I need you to reset all of our company usernames and passwords. We're letting someone go today and it's company policy to change all of that. At the same time, Louise texts me that she is being let go. So I read the company handbook and make a copy of the page that says the IT person must update the usernames and passwords and give the information to the COO. I changed all of the usernames and passwords to everything, from social media accounts to bank accounts to QuickBooks and emails. I send the usernames and passwords in an encrypted email to Louise and then send the CEO my two-week notice. Two weeks go by. It's the last hour of my last day. So what do I do? Change all those usernames and passwords again and send them to Louise who is also celebrating her last day. I log out of my email, put my company phone and laptop in the mail, and spend the evening cackling at my malicious compliance. The very next day on Saturday, the CEO calls me repeatedly. Finally, she leaves me a long and howling voicemail to say what I did was unprofessional 
and she would make sure my reputation suffered and I would never work in that industry again. I wait until Monday to call her back. Hey, CEO, I saw you called. I need the usernames and passwords to everything. I'm sorry, but I don't work there anymore. You will have to contact your IT person to help with that. You are the IT person. No, I was the IT person. Now I'm a private consultant and I would be happy to provide my services at a rate of $100 an hour. You changed all the usernames and passwords and didn't provide them to me. Correct. Per company policy, when an employee leaves the organization, the IT person is supposed to update everything and send the new info to the COO. I was leaving, so I updated everything. I provided all the usernames and passwords to Louise. You knew she was quitting too. Why would you give them to her? Because the company policy says to transfer the new username and passwords to the COO, not the CEO. Louise was the COO when I left. Caught in her own bureaucracy, she then had to spend weeks trying to gain access to all of the company accounts. On Louise's and my last day, Tina and another employee quit. Another person announced her retirement. Once the five of us were gone, we were followed by several other employees. In total, 11 people on the 14-person staff quit within a few weeks. The best part? I got a new job making the same amount I did at the SH Asterisk TTY nonprofit, but part-time in a government position and with full-time benefits. So much for my reputation suffering. I stayed in touch with one of the employees who stayed behind, she's only three years away from retirement and is basically Stan from the office. She said they've hired at least a dozen people, all of them quit as soon as they could find another job. Anyway, I'm bored in the hospital and started going through old texts. Stumbled on our old group chat and had a good chuckle. Thought you all might find it humorous too. Names obviously changed. Maliciously comply to overwhelm our external IT service. I work with a small company to finish my bachelor's degree, also Sreddy English isn't my mother language. They are expanding right now and the new building was just finished, so a lot of people moved from our building into the new one. So we have a lot of empty rooms but apparently didn't get any new office furniture, which I still can't understand because you can't employ new people and build a new house without buying new office stuff. The problem was that a lot of people share their office tables and move around from office to office whenever someone is missing, so it's not that we didn't need more space and furniture. During the move from our colleagues to the new building someone plucked in a lawn cable wrong which caused the server for two buildings to shut down. After nearly two days of troubleshooting the server worked again, and the first thing our managing director did was send an email to everyone how we're not allowed anymore to plug in or plug out any of our lawn cables ourselves. Instead we have to write a ticket for our external IT service. Needless to say that would take ages. Also remember that a lot of people have to move daily and everyone has a laptop that they need to plug in. Well the whole company just figured let's just maliciously comply. So for the next week everyone who have to move between office tables just wrote a ticket in the evening and came to work the next day to wait for the external IT guys, during that time the colleagues which would normally work on that office tables just sat there and waited for hours not doing anything. After a few higher-ups complaint that they can't work the managing director got us enough office equipment that everyone have their own place. Now a lot of people have to move on the same day and are still waiting for the external IT service to plug out our laptops and plug them in on our new desk. The funny thing is on the same day of the move there are some server problems again and together with the move the company wrote 160 tickets in one day for the external IT guys, we only have between 200 and 300 workers. Needless to say they didn't get to everyone which means we're still waiting for them to plug out and plug in our laptops. Also because of how many tickets we filed really important tickets got overlooked and now a major customer is pissed because they didn't get their data. The management wrote another email today that they will work on a better solution for the plug in and plug out rule. But we're all still sitting on our old desk and are waiting for the IT guys not working at all. And rumors are that the IT service is really pissed at management.